everybody, and um, thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to present our work here. My name is Veli Matti Bartonen, and I'm a project manager uh, of the North Green Project at the Finnish Cancer Registry, where I'm also um, doing my PhD studies. So my topic for today is the North Green, which is an interactive web platform for cross-country comparison of cervical cancer screening. And in a few um, details, what the North Green is about. So it's a pilot model for cross-country comparison of cancer screening programs, and we're currently focusing on cervical cancer screening. Um, it's based on up-to-date cancer screening registry data from the Nordic countries and also Estonia. It's a publicly available interactive web-based application that delivers cancer screening information and indicator data. And it's built on standardized indicators to monitor performance. For example, the European guidelines for quality assurance of cervical cancer screening has defined many indicators that we've applied to our approach. There's three benefits that I would like to emphasize here. First, the data that we have is harmonized, so we're so it, that it's comparable between different settings and different countries instead of varying definitions. Currently, many countries also report indicators, but they have differing age ranges for women, they have different um, criteria for what tests are included and are, are all test methods included and so on. So what we've done is harmonize the data structure so that we can make fairer comparisons. Um, we also have long time trends available instead of only cross-sectional information. So many, many previously published uh, comparisons between countries are, are cross-sectional, so they do provide a good snapshot of, of given year, but it's harder to see temporal trends in there, whereas we have both the long time trends and also the cross-sectional information. The third benefit is that our software is interactive allowing users to filter data that fits their uh, particular needs. For example, looking at certain age group or certain year or so on. So the workflow in the project goes like this. So we have first within the project team specified what the screening data format should look like and then written a script in our um, statistics language that will aggregate the results. So the screening data format will be put to specified format within the collaborating countries and then locally in the collaborating centers and our script will be run that aggregates the data so that we don't need to use individual level data at the project team level, but the country collaborators will do that for us. And then they will just send the aggregated data to the project team, and then we'll upload that data into the online application that I'll showcase later. Currently, we are using Microsoft Power BI software with that. Um, the current status uh, is that we have provided cancer screening fact sheets from each of the Nordic country and Estonia telling what the cervical cancer screening program is like in each country and some statistics on cancer burden as well. And then we have cancer screening data up to 2018 from all of the countries except Denmark, which is still pending. Um, the current indicators that we have on the website are 
for cervical cancer screening, as I mentioned. So we have indicators related to test coverage. So what percentage of women have had a test within a certain time and test intensity uh, telling how intensive the testing is that the other some women who have possibly um, too many tests within a certain time frame and then we have uh, test results for uh, the, the indicators for the test results themselves and these indicators can be shown by country by age group so we divided the population to five-year age groups and included everyone from 16 to 89 year olds and then calendar year um, starting from the 1980s in Iceland up to year 2018 and then coverage interval so we can look at either the current year how many tests and what the test results are for a given year or we can look back a longer time to see whether uh, how many women have had a test within the last 10.5 years and last we also included the test method data so whether we're looking at HPV tests or whether we're looking at cytology as Nordic countries are implementing more and more HPV testing, it's important to be able to distinguish in our indicators as well. Um, we've also published the first paper on this in Acta Oncologica last year, um, giving more background to the, how, we, how we calculate the indicators. And then I'll show you a brief demo of the website So here's the landing page, nordscreen.org, and in here you can find the indicators. I'll show. First, we'll look at the test coverage, and now the software is loading. Um, apologies if this is a little small, but now we're seeing um, test coverage by year uh, for years 2000 to 2018. And we're looking at 5.5 year coverage, also whether the woman has had a test within the last 5.5 years. So this is the um, maximum of the like recommended interval for a routine screening. And we're looking at 30 to 64 year old women. So here we can see that um, Finland is lowest here at around 70%, a little more than 70%. And then we have um, data from uh, Estonia. So this is the national health insurance data. Uh, so we're looking at both the organized testing and the opportunistic testing here. And then uh, Sweden. Sweden is the, the highest here uh, with almost 85% in this age range. And we can also look at uh, things by time interval. So here showing that in Finland, 30 to 64 year women, if we only look at uh, one year, there's only 15% of women that have had a test of the whole target population. But then when we extend the, um, the time interval to 10.5 years, there's around 20% of women who haven't had a test within the last 10 years. Um, we can also look at the difference between age groups. And here, using Finland as an example, um, there are some age groups here, um, 16 to 19 and 20 to 24. 20 to 29 these are not included in the official um, recommendation for screening age so that's why they're much smaller and if you compare this to Norway for example uh, you can see that 
the figures are um, slightly larger, but we're now also looking at just one year interval. If we're looking at five years, then you see uh, a little clearer picture on which age groups um, are not being tested. So there's the 20 to 24 four year olds only have a 24% coverage, whereas the others have around 70 80%. And we can also look at the test method coverage. And here in, for Finland, you can see that it's mostly cytology test method. And the HPV testing is now slowly uh, increasing. And then we can look at the test intensity briefly. And now it's loading again. So especially showing the test distribution by age. So now um, for Sweden, and we can put the latest year here to show just the latest year. in last 5.5 years. So how many tests has a woman had? And if we look at the 22 year olds, almost none of them have had a test. And the mm, test coverage increases rapidly and then decreases after the screening age ends. But especially among 28 year olds, there's almost 8% that have had more than four tests within the last 5.5 years. And then looking at the test results, So now um, we've put, put three different um, indicators here. So there's any positive test result, which means that it's uh, in Papa Nicola classification, at least, at least two, or HPV positive, or ASCUS, or LCIL, or any of the more um, clearly positive results. So what's evident here is that there's an increase in most of the countries. There's an especially sharp increase in Iceland. Um, it's almost 12%. And this seems to be true. And the Icelandic um, co collaborators have provided some explanations for this. So they switched to a new thin prep test there and are more aggressively putting unclear results into HPV triaging to decide what to do with them. And, but as you can see, the, most of the, like the positivity rate is around 5 to 8% within most, most countries here. And, but if you look at the clearly positive results, which warrant a colposcopy, in most screening algorithms. So here we can see the, what the um, different results in either Bethesda or Papa Nicola classification are. So they are around 1%. In Finland, they were under 1%. In 2018, it was 0.7%, whereas, whereas in Estonia, it was 1.8%. And in other countries, it's closer to 1%. And now we can also look at this by test method. And here showing for Norway that within these years, within this age group, the HPV test had a, um, had a positive result in 7% 
whereas in for cytology it was around five percent. And then if we look at Finland for the same, it um, looks like roughly equal, so five percent and eight percent. And for Sweden, yeah, it's similar, five percent to nine percent. There's also differences in age groups that we can show here. Um, for Finland, if we look at any or either test method, whether cytology or HPV, there's an um, age gradient here, but it's not so steep that if we look at HPV results, we can, sh we can see that the younger women, especially the 30 to 34 year old group, has a positivity rate of 16.5%, which is uh, similar in Sweden as well, 16.4%. Uh, in Norway, it's a little, little less, but here the reason is that um, they start HPV screening at age 34, so this age group actually includes only only the 34 year olds except in very few cases and then we also have an indicator on data quality on uh, what percentage is of the test results are unsatisfactory and you can see that it's quite low here it's under two percent recently in all countries but it's been higher in Norway um, this is, is partly explained by the fact that we have combined the test data into test episodes to improve comparability between countries. So, and all tests within the 90 days from the first test have been combined to one episode. So, if there's an unsatisfactory test, that is, um, uh, that there is a subsequent test within 90 days, we've only take the worst result into account. So it kind of overrides the unsatisfactory one. Um, but there are very few missing results here. It's under under percent, much less under percent, except for Estonia, which is normally not included, because most of the test results there are currently missing. So that was the demo that I wanted to show you, and let's continue with the uh, slideshow. And uh, to give you an idea of further plans that we have, uh, we're currently um, uh, writing a second publication on the test results. And then um, the third paper will be on extending this analysis to diagnostic verifications, so the histological data from biopsies taken during colposcopy. So we can uh, be better sure on what, what what's happening in this within the screening pathway. So linking the primary test data with histology allows for analysis and comparison of first compliance with colposcopy referral, whether women actually go to colposcopy after having a clearly positive result. Um, what is the detection rate of CIN2 plus in different age groups, in different years, with different test methods, and also provide an estimates for the positive predictive values of the test results. And this same approach um, for creating indicators in um, countries where there's population-based screening in place and good quality regis registries. This may be used for other uh, screening programs, uh, mainly breast cancer and colorectal cancer are those that are being screened in all Nordic countries. And this is a, a team effort and I'd like to acknowledge all the partners that we have here. So the National Cancer or Screening Registries in all the Nordic countries and Estonia. Uh, the Finnish Cancer Registry is 
responsible for the management and scientific development of the uh, project, whereas Karolinska Institute is uh, mostly responsible for the technical development of the platform. And then we have collaborating national partners in each country. And the Nordic Cancer Union has provided funding for our research. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you.